up homies, welcome to a new playthrough and this first episode of Lisfanga, the time shift warrior. In Lisfanga we play as Ime, the titular Lisfanga of her kingdom, a semi-divine warrior that is born with special abilities into every generation. Turns out, evil stuff's been steering in the ruins of the old kingdom and we gotta head over there and check out why the ancient time locks don't work anymore and why the place is swarmed with enemies. This game is a mix of strategic planning and skillful hack and slay execution offset strategy. We run into challenge after challenge and have to use our time splitting abilities, trusty sword and shield, as well as skills and runes to kill a horde of goons in a given time frame. Throughout these fights, Ime can stop and rewind time and create another version of herself while her previous iterations repeat their previous moves until all enemies are toast. In this playthrough, we will try to go as completionist as possible. We will complete every time challenge, collect every chest and other collectible. Oh, and we'll also read every world building codex entry. There's gonna be timestamps though if you only want to see the smashing bits, the core story. In this first episode, we run into our twin brother who is acting kinda shady and we notice his crystallized arm. We repair an ancient golem and… oh yeah. Actually, meet our goddess, who is the one that provides us with our sick time-splitting abilities. You know, just your typical Tuesday. Obviously, we'll also slice and dice some imps and goblins on our way through the fancy-looking ruins. Anyway, thanks for coming by and enjoy. In Antala, two rival factions, Mayura and Balara, shaped the land through brutal conflict. Eventually, and after years of battle, a truce was reached. But alas, that peace did not last. Mysterious creatures invaded our world. We called these demons the Raxes. The Balarans fell overnight as the rest of us watched in horror. Our only hope came at a terrible cost. I, Chimera, Queen of Mayura, went through the ritual of ascension. And in doing so, I became a god. I stopped time itself in the old cities, trapping all inside. The invasion was quelled, and I faded into the shadows. The cities remained trapped in time for centuries. The survivors of the Calamity fled and founded the New Kingdom. Now, every generation, the Kingdom is blessed with the birth of a warrior. A soul protector known as Lisfanga, who passes their powers down to the next. Until something unexpected happened. Twins. You, Ime, strong in the way of the blade, and your brother, Kehol, a burgeoning master of magic. When time came for you both to accept your duties as Lisfanga, this responsibility became yours alone. For Kehol left without a word, not even to you. A few years later, our people woke from their slumber in terror. The golden glow of the time locks gone from the horizon. From the old continent, my voice is calling for you. This is where your journey begins, Lisfanga. Finally, the lost city of Mayura. You can barely tell this place has been sealed for 500 years. It's peaceful here, and altogether too quiet. I need to find what made the time locks disappear. What is 
Is that Araxis? The old enemy from the legends. If what they say is true, a horde cannot be far away. Let's see. <gasps> hey, get back here! Alright, here we are, Liz Fanga. I played this game as a demo in the Steam Next Fest, the first one of 2024, and this actually was my favorite game from the Steam Next Fest. I gave this a whopping 9 out of 10, which is very high for me. Um, just based on the fact that the gameplay here is hmm, immensely satisfying. We'll see in the moment what that has to offer. Um, and also, I gave this a hopeful 9 out of 10, because in the demo version, the game was pretty empty in terms of you know, story. There wasn't any story. There were hints at story, especially in the trailer, but the demo just offered us some of the challenges that we can uh, see now in, in a couple of minutes, um, but no story. And I had hoped that all these you know, little pieces in between would be filled up with story. And we had this crazy long <laughs> intro cutscene. So there is story. I'm excited. Let's play. Run around, pick up shit. This all oozes with power. I should take it. Here we are. Gameplay. <laughs> Overview. At the beginning of each fight, observe the environment to plan out your actions. Move the camera with blah 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 and start the fight by pressing A. And a number of remaining Raxes is displayed at the top of the left screen. Oh, top left of the screen, Jesus. Raxes that were previously killed appear at the bottom and Raxes that are still alive appear in the middle. To win, eliminate all the Raxes in the arena. Press X to use your blade, slash your enemies. You can also rush your target with your shield and stagger them by pressing Y, leading to a stun. There you are. And you brought friends. And a portal. An entry point, perhaps. Strange. Oh yeah, that portal is new. So, how this goes now, I'm... And let's not press pause. We have several characters that we can do stuff with. At least it was that was the case in the demo. We've got several. It's not exactly timelines, but it kind of is. We've got a limited time frame here, uh, which is apparently already going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What the hell? Oh what? no, it was a what? <laughs> what happened? Are you sure? I was explaining things. It is what it is. Do not be afraid, my child. You are here at my behest. I was the one who called you to these forgotten lands. Goddess of time. Chimera, is that... you? Yes, my child. I brought you here to grant you my aid. Raxes are free from my spell and threaten to ravage our world once more. And yet, I sense an even greater threat behind them. They have learned from the past, become even more dangerous. And so, my gift to you is time. Time? No, no. I need real power. Don't you have a magic sword for me? <laughs> Receive my light, Lisfunga. Let this power flow through you. <laughs> Get ignored. <laughs> With this power, you will have command over time. Fight your enemies. Rewind time. And fight again alongside your past selves. You will appear as an army to your enemies. But you are not invincible. Use this power wisely. <laughs> okay. I guess now we get to the thing that I was trying to explain. <laughs> Here we are, remnants. You earned the ability to rewind time. Using it resets the fight to its beginning, creating a perfect copy of yourself. So yourself, a remnant that replaces exactly all of your actions. This power is triggered when you die and can also be activated by pressing LT. At the start of a fight, a portal is opened, wiping you out when the time is shown at the center of the screen is up. 
This or getting hit after losing your health points makes you automatically rewind time. Any rewind, manual or not, uses a remnant from your count. You lose if you run out. So, now I get to explain things. <laughs> so yeah, think of this like uh, playing Gran Turismo and fighting your own, uh, your own shadow car and trying to beat it. Except this time around we... Uh, the shadow cars are our homies and we are trying to run over these, these goblins here or whatever these homies are called, Rexes. Um, so we've got three, uh, like three, it's not characters, Three. it's, it's us three times but in different times. Um, and we have to defeat all of these guys in a limited time frame or this portal up there destroys us. So what we do here now is we go with the first character, we go up. Uh, to that guy on the left there, I can't focus it, just the, the leftmost guy from the three facing us and then up the stairs, kill that other guy, then we rewind time, do that same stuff with the, you know, the guys on the on the right there, down the stairs and then we do the same stuff through the middle and um, each time we repeat that, the other character that we've played before does the same thing so if we go down to the right, defeat these guys, our first um, impersonation walks up um, to the stairs and kills these guys at the same time and basically we have to defeat all these um, enemies in a given time frame and there's time challenges. Back to Gran Turismo. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Start fight. I'm here again. Hey, is that another me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And rewind time. More me's, more power. Ah. Why is that other character not moving? And rewind time. I don't know why this, <laughs> why the first character is not moving. Also, we got the skill to kill people in. Now we fuck them up, and there's our first character doing his shit. Here we are. Good stuff. Your time. 34 seconds 28, best time 34 seconds 28. She was right. This is much better than a magical sword. But I can only use it so many times. I need to be smart. Alright. This is the gameplay here, and it gets obviously gets way harder. You get skills, you get abilities, uh, you get passives, all that stuff. Um and it just gets Harder and harder, so it turns into a kind of a puzzle game where you still have to execute as as the all these fighting skills, which is kind of cool. If the priests back home had known about the Raxes, they wouldn't have let me go. And now there's stuff to find here. Nice. This was one of my little complaints in the demo. Uh, there was nothing here, it was just empty space. It looks cool, it was just empty, running around. Uh, without purpose. Now, there's stuff to find. <laughs> so get your gamer senses up, they're gonna be tingling a bunch. Nope. Next challenge. Condemned enemies. When a Rex is killed, it will be considered condemned in the following loops. Rexes in this state have a skull above them. This means that they will be killed by your remnants in the following loops. Rexes in this state cannot see the real you. However, getting too close to them or attacking them will break them out of this state and make them able to see the real you again. Beware, as this could make them move out of your remnants and attacks and change their fate. Enemies Indicator. Enemies still alive are shown by indicators appearing around Ime. Once defeated, they will no longer appear there unless they lose the condemned state. Let's see what my new powers can do. Alright. And now we start planning things. So again we got three um like copies of ourselves. And what we do here, we go up to the right for oh, no, first we go through the middle. Attack this guy, so he's stun locked. <laughs> Can't attack the other, uh, uh, the other ones of our copies. Then we walk straight forward, kill that guy. Then the guy on the left there, and I think that's enough for this character. After that, we can go um, 
with the second character, go up uh, up here, these like stairs, this ramp, kill this guy, jump over here, kill these two, and the last one um, goes through here, down here, kills that guy, and then the one up there. That's the plan. Beat a time challenge in the story. Time to beat, 35 seconds. The first one didn't have a time to beat. Uh, but we were 9 seconds faster than the time to beat. Good stuff. I'm starting to get the hang of this. Portal relics. Portal relics are vestiges of your fights with the Rexes. Use them to replay fights you have already won to improve and improve your strategy to beat the time challenge. Um... This portal now is like this golden shiny color. This means uh, that we've beaten the um, um, the time challenge. Uh, otherwise, they'd be, I think, blue or purple or whatever. Purple. Pur Spells. Press B to use your equipped spell. We might have done that <laughs> uh, already. Uh, spells give you secondary abilities capable of changing the outcome of a fight. Their cooldown is shown at the bottom of the screen and will be shortened if you rewind time manually. Another portal. Let's go. So that skill you probably have already noticed, the skill that we have um, just pulls everyone in so we um, can have more people on us and uh, smash them with AoE attacks and not have to run to each homie individually. So what we do here, first of all, we go again through the middle, pull in these three guys, smash them, and then walk up this ramp, kill this guy, that's it. Second character goes down to the left, kills, um, jumps over this little gap, kills this guy, jumps over that gap, kills that guy, and the third character has to do the most stuff here. Um, walk here, kill that guy, walk up here, kill that guy over there, teleport over again and kill these two. I think there's possibilities to optimize here, but I actually don't know how. Mm. Obvious idea would be to use the second character, for example, to kill this guy and then walk back. Yeah, I think that's a... Uh, let's try that. So first of all, these three in the middle and the one up there. Stop running away. Mm -hmm. Smash them. Nice time. Damn, 10 seconds faster or 9 seconds faster. Good stuff. There must be clues in Mayura as to why the Raxes are back. I have to know more. Tell you what, my gamer senses are <laughs> tingling as fuck. Feel like we probably have already missed one of these blue orbs. Oh, no, we didn't. I mean, maybe we did. <laughs> I can't see any. Chest time. Remnant shard obtained. Find three more to be able to create another remnant. So this would give us four remnants in a fight. Cool. New enemies. Twins. To beat twins, you must defeat them simultaneously. A living twin will heal and re revive its linked partner. So these two these fat two blobs up here. Uh huh. She calls them two rexes. I call them fat blobs. Um, they are linked together and they have to be killed at the same time. So, obviously, one uh, of our copies goes to the left, 
kills that guy down here, then this one, then this one. One goes to the right, kills these two, then these, and then this one, and that should be at the same time. And the first character goes to the middle, kills these three, so they aren't um, locked. Or they don't load, uh, they don't um, lock onto the other characters and don't disturb us. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it, yeah. So first character kills these three. Again, nine seconds faster. <laughs> so I'm gonna stay that way. Any orbs? Don't think so. There's probably no orbs on these battlefields, huh? Mm hmm. Get spotted. New mechanic, magical doors. Raxes are using magical doors to block your path. Destroy the crystal powering them to open the way. So that little that crystal is powering the magic barrier. Right. I should destroy it. That little purple crystal here. You have to destroy that shit so this door is opened and we can get to the twin. So one character has to go up here, kill the crystal together with that guy standing next to it, then attack the twin. One character has to Go up here, kill these two, wait for the door to open and kill the twin. And one character has to kill these two and focus on these two so they um, don't bother the one uh, destroying the door. So that's again the first character. These are all the same character, I keep calling them character. I forgot about these two. <laughs> smashing a little bit so we make sure that we kill him simultaneously with the other one oh damn barely nice uh oh <laughs> we are only what seven seconds we lost two seconds <laughs> Damn, these are kind of hidden, huh? It's kind of cool. I like how they are not, you know, covered in gamer juice and uh, bright shiny. Uh, they kind of blend into the um, environment. I like that. Gotta be an eye user. Someone's ahead. Oh, damn. That's new to me. <laughs> Tell me, Grenos. What more should I know about the temple? I've told you all I know. I assure you that there's really no need for all this. You there. What are you doing in here? That voice. Sister? Kel? Is that you? But how? Oh. This is not quite how I imagined our reunion, Ima. You should not have come here. We notice that his arms have the same, or his left arm is the same kind of crystal that we see popping up here all around the place. So we're just gonna go ahead and assume that he's a bad guy. <laughs> there are dark forces at work in these forsaken lands. You do not want to be involved in any of this. What are you talking about, brother? And what? Who is that? I'm. Quiet, you! See? He's a bad guy. <laughs> Sister, leave this place. 
for your own sake. Do not come further. Raxis, stop her if she tries. Carol! Damn it! Maybe he... Maybe this goes deeper and he's not a bad guy. He just seems like a bad guy, you know? <laughs> we'll find out. I think speculation isn't exactly helpful here. Guardians. Uh, other, other types of fat guys. Guardians block attacks with their giant shields. You can only damage them from their back. Cooperate with the Remians to defeat them. So, tactic here is attack them from the front with one character. This will just, you know, stun lock him so he focuses on that first character. And then the other two get up from behind him and smash him in the rear. So, the thing that the first character does, walk up here and spam this guy with attacks so he doesn't um, turn around when the other others arrive. And the other two just walk down here to the right and up here to the left through these enemies, teleport behind that guy and smash him from behind. Should be enough. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh oh, we're down to six and a half seconds. <laughs> This doesn't stack up, but you know. Kehor, where have you? What should I do? Hmm. Perhaps if I fix this one, he might be able to help me. No, oh, damn. Easily fixed. He Hello again. Thank you for fixing me. Most kind. You were speaking with my brother about a... temple. Is that where he's headed? Where is it? That symbol on your armor. The same as Janna's. Very well. I will explain everything. What symbol is he talking about? The big crystal in the middle? I don't see symbols on her armor. <laughs> or at least, as much as I can. But... We should reach safer surroundings first. I know a place. Please, follow me. <laughs> yeah, sure. Fine, lead the way. Trust the big robot. Oh, damn. <laughs> nice crib walk. Welcome. This place is safe from the Raxis. Protection magic is shielding these stones from intruders. It was once a magical academy during the reign of Queen Chimera. I served here as a collector and teacher of history. Ah, my poor Mayora. She was a true marvel, and now... Well, consider this your base of expedition. A camp, if you will. Please, about my brother. What is he doing here? And with the Raxes, no less. Alas, I only know his destination. The Temple of Mayu. Then that's where I'm headed. Indeed. But first, let me... <laughs> ha -ha! Okay. Still working. With this spell, I will be able to see through your eyes, if you let me. I will try to help you however I can. And with this trinket, you will be able to use the teleporters of the city, including the big one here. And last but not least, let me teach you a little spell from my time, to aid you in your fights against the Raxus. Thanks, Grenos. Big homie, fast travel. You unlock the, tele the ability to teleport. Press huh anywhere and up if you are near a teleporter to open the locations menu and select the place to teleport to. New spell unlocked. Orb of light. Th throws a ball of energy in a line in front of you, dealing damage in an area on impact. Huh? And 
we gain what? <laughs> we just randomly gain three extra shards, so four remnants it is. Cool stuff. So I can do this and oh damn. Ooh. So up there to the left. Uh, where it says one, two, three. I assume these are chapters or tiers of this place. We've got low city of Mayura. We collected one out of four, whatever. Five out of 19, probably these orbs. One out of four is probably the remnant shard. Five out of 13 time challenges and whatever these zero out of one types are. There's three more areas. There's a whole new area here with four areas each as well. We got skills. First of all, our um, pull together and smash skill and the orb of light. We can equip that now and it's active. And later on, we get runes and the power of the goddess. Locations, tutorial, character. <laughs> character. This shows our remnant shards. All right, cool. What you got Prince, to say? You mentioned a man named Janna before. Man. He was one of my teachers. How did you meet him? Janna is the one who found me, restored me. He told me of your new kingdom. You could say he got me up to date. Then he left. I do hope he is safe out there. I don't know if I'll ever see him again, but I am grateful for the time we shared together. Cool. So we are supposed to return to Majura's lower city using the teleporter. Let's first check this place out. Cause you know my game of senses be tingling. But there's probably no orb in this um, hub, huh? But we gotta make sure. Looks cool. Anything else? No? Alright. Then let's teleport, I guess, to the peak of the outskirts, huh? It's the only destination that we got unlocked. So now we got that flashbang grenade, whatever, light bolt. Equipped. Hello? Ime, can you hear me? <laughs> oh, damn. Does the spell work? <laughs> nice headset. Yeah. It feels like you're in my head. <laughs> look at her right ear. Doesn't that look like a Bluetooth headset? <laughs> Here we are. She's a douchebag. I will use your experiences to complete a codex. Places you visit, Raxis you slay. Consult it at your leisure. Thanks. That could be useful. <laughs> One last thing. Your brother did not look pleased to be here. He seemed scared of something. Alas, he did not share what. Granos's Codex. Press down to open Granos's Codex. It centralizes all the knowledge you have discovered throughout your journey. Uh, oh damn. Um, this is a reading channel, and I like story. So here we are. <laughs> Get used to my voice. Ime, Lisvanga of the New Kingdom. Brilliant news, I have met a young warrior who is here to free Mayura from the Raxis. I couldn't believe she shared the powers of Goddess Chimera, but seeing her powers in combat dispelled all my doubts. He didn't see our powers of, power of, of combat so far, but sure. I worry that she keeps uh, going off without hearing everything I have to say, but I understand her quest for her lost brother is dear to her heart. She has shown similar compassion to us golems so far. I am thankful. <laughs> I feel like I'm supposed to read this a little bit later when we get a little bit more connection between these. Oh, cool. Progress further through the story. And that gives us more uh, entry uh, entries here. Ah. I like it. Uh, Kehor. Um, studious mage. Soon after my waking, I almost got knocked back into eternal sleep when this young man attacked me. Thankfully, his twin sister, Ime, rescued me. Kehor has, was born from the Benedictian benediction like his sister but he abandoned the new kingdom he left them instead of sharing with them his gifts as a future lesfanga and a bright mage my impressions of him were limited but i keep but i could feel the weight of deep and dark feelings inside him 
Ime seems determined to rescue him, but who knows what uh, but who knows what that would entail, or even if you will let her help. Chimera, ascended goddess of time, praise be Chimera, guardian of time, mother of the blessed, she who brought us salvation from the calamity. May she watch over us, may her reign be eternal. Overture to Psalm 9 of the Testament of Ascension. The former queen of Meura became a goddess after performing the ritual of ascension, for which many sacrificed their lives, entrusting their hope to her. After stopping the calamity, she was, she was gone from the material world with only the glow of the time logs left as testament to her legacy. But with them broken, she has decided to make contact with her new champion, Ime. We got Granos, magical historian. Well, I'm at the dreaded page about myself. I will attempt my best efforts to make it shorter than Kolansky's anthology in 13 volumes whose author I had a chance to frequent in the, shop, in the shops of magic, of magic, coffee and Mayura. <clears throat> As a historian, I would certainly hope to make my life appear humbler than the Codices of Antala, a complete guide to the histories of all tribes, which was sadly lost in the Great Fire of the year 2 after Mayu's ascent, an event which, to be exact, this continues for multiple paragraphs and pages. Huh. Wasn't there more here? Yeah, here, Jenna. No picture. Intrepid archaeologist. Jana is a sage from the New Kingdom and turns out to have been Ime's tutor. It was he who prepared me and brought me up to date on the important events of the past centuries. I like that idea because um, I think it was kind of weird that she was able to just repair that guy. But if her tutor initially repaired him, I think there's, you know, some leeway to accept that she is able to repair him as well. <laughs> Um, he was here in Mayura before anyone else, after the time locks disappeared, driven by his inquisitive spirit and obsession with archaeology. I was worried when he suddenly left, but I've seen him to be surprisingly limble and strong for his age, a healthy mind and a healthy body. He told me after, uh, he told me after describing to me his daily regime of uh, walking 80 parks a day, parks, 80 parks a day plus eating one banana. <laughs> okay, sure. Perhaps the Raxes are in for a surprise if they cross his path. And we've got King Swami the Eleventh, King of the New Kingdom. A letter was delivered to Ime by a magical carrier from this King Swami the Eleventh of the New Kingdom. It looked carefully written by the hand of a scribe. Ime dropped it dismissively, so I keep it here for safekeeping. <laughs> are we going to get to that point? <laughs> Uh, whatever. Esteemed Lasfanga of the 11th generation, protector of the kingdom, clear, uh, dear Ime, please receive our most appreciative support for your quest. We would have been thankful for a notice of your departure and feared you might have replicated your brother's fu uh, fugue had some priests not intercepted you on your way out to explain. Do you find yourself missing anything on your travels? Are the Raxes truly free? Please write back. <laughs> Leave him on red. Um, okay, we are try. I will try to um, not read every entry here as soon as it pops off. We're gonna turn this into like separate reading sessions, so I can um, add in timestamps. So anybody who doesn't want to hear me read, use those. If I remember, a future Shuni remember, remembers to put them in. <laughs> okay. Wait, what? Twenty-one new entry? Oh my god! No, wait. Okay. <laughs> Continuing the reading session. <laughs> Sorry. Antala, the world. Our world is called Antala. There are at least two great expanses of land on it. For a long time, the continent on which Ime was born was nothing but a remote colony, sparsely populated. It was during the calamity that the tribes of the old continent, led by Mayura, fled there to forge the new kingdom, leaving their former lands to contain the Raxus invasion within the spell of the Time Locks. Who knows how many more continents our world may contain? What lies beyond? Lisfanga, bearer of light, protector of the new kingdom. I asked, has it ever happened that Lisfanga tried to become king and reign upon the new kingdom as a divine ruler? Ime looked at me with the eyes of a fish learning about water for the first time. No, and it never occurred to me to think about it. That must, that the, uh, that must be why so many priests are, so priests are surveilling us constantly in the capital. They must be scared one of us would try to do something and overthrow the king. Oh how, oh, how I hated this constant feeling of being watched. I feel much better here. I asked, Can Lusfanga have children? This time she laughed. Yes, and some turn it into a, uh, some turn it into a sport. Kari, the fourth Lusfanga, is said to have had more than a hundred children over his many years of life. A fraction of our power is passed it down, but nothing extraordinary. The real transfer of power occurs when a Lusfanga inherits the blessing upon the passing of their predecessor. 
For me, that happened five years ago. This is when Kehor disappeared. I'm guessing he never got his powers. He was always a good mage from birth. I guess he did not care. Remnants, magical clones of Ime. Kumera's gift to Ime in order to fight the Rex's army. She can turn back time a short while and find alongside clones of herself. To me, it only looks like there is suddenly an army of Ime splitting from the main body. With this power, we will have com you will have command over time. Fight your enemies, rebind time and fight against again alongside your past selves. You will appear as an army to your enemies, but you are not invincible. Use this power wisely. Komero's words to Ime as she gave her this power. The benediction, blessing for future generations. Before fading from the material world and splending nearly all of her powers uh, to create the time locks, Komera created what we call the rite of the benediction, which ensures the birth of a new Lisfanga every generation. Ime told me how it is done. The old ashen tree in the main temple of Komera blooms. Its sap mixes with the pool of water underneath it, infusing it with golden light and dense magic. Some call it the blood of the goddess. The doors of the temple will be closed and sacredly guarded over several weeks, at the end of which the body of a baby human imbued with the powers of the goddess is found in the basin. In time, that baby will acquire the powers of the previous Lisfanger and inherit the title. It was a shock when they opened that gate and found twins. Some reportedly took it as a sign of a coming apocalypse. Perhaps they were worried? Let's hope not. The Calamity. I hope that there will be this item is new um, marks on here because it's going to be tough to keep track of. Um, end of an era. Mysterious creatures invaded our world. We called these demons the Rexes. The Balarans fell overnight as the rest of us watched in horror. Our only hope came, out of, out, uh, came at a terrible cost. I, Kumera, Queen of Miura, went through the ritual of ascension, and in doing so, I became a god. I stopped myself in the, in the uh, I stopped time itself in the old cities, trapping all inside. The invasion was quelled, and I faded into the shadows. The cities remained trapped in time for centuries. The survivors of the calamity fled and founded the new kingdom. Excerpt of the Testament of Ascension. This tale was written by survivors of the calamity in the new kingdom. The Rexes, demons from another world. Portals opening from hell, lidless, spherical eyes looking back at us with not, with not rage, but simply the dark desire to mutilate and ravage. When the Raxes appeared at the time of the Calamity, these savage foes threatened to destroy all that was sacred and noble in Antala. Our warriors were no match for them. Our walls collapsed like reeds under the trampling of their colossi, leaving our people vulnerable to the swarm. They left us no choice. The only option we had left to fight them was the Forbidden Ritual of Ascension. Passage from the Testament of Ascension of the New Kingdom. The New Kingdom. Hope of Civilization. I am fascinated with the evolution of the tribes a new centuries ago. Since the Calamity, they have managed to put their differences aside and federated, federated under the eclectic New Kingdom. Interestingly, it seems the core of its culture is an evolution of Mayuran mercantilism with the addition of more or less zealous cults dedicated to Comera, a religion that understandably arose from a deeply scarred people. On the periphery of the power center is a cast of priests dedicated to supporting the Lesfanga. Priests, whom Ime describes as old and senile parasites, using the Lesfanga as a way to earn personal influence. Unfortunately, I know this kind of people very well. What intrigues me the most, however, are the intricate district systems and voting methods that allow each tribe to maintain its sovereignty while participating in a unified political entity. Mayura, the oasis of the desert. Once known for the cutthroat competition between its squabbling guilds, Mayura was greatly transformed after the ascension of Mayu. His new foundation of a fair law, a fair law paved the way for the kingdom to become a hub of commerce, welcoming traders and merchants from all tribes. During the Calamity, the markets and houses were abandoned hurriedly when all citizens, citizens had to flee. Some people barricaded their houses in the vain hope that they would come back one day. Recently, 500 years after the evacuation of the city, the time locks that sealed the city have disappeared and Ime is among the first to set foot in its streets in centuries. Unsurprisingly, the splendor and durability of the magical cloth that made the towns renowned has survived the horrors of the Calamity and the test of time. I must admit that being locked in time helped. <laughs> sure. Swarmers. These are the enemies, huh? Swarmers. Demonic foot soldiers. 
The hierarchy of the Raxes remains nebulous, but I feel little compunction in putting these ones at the bottom. A small head with a big horn. They seem to lack even the basic level of intelligence and rush head first, literally, at any threat they perceive. Easy pickings, but as the name suggests, they can easily get deadly in the pack. Imps, evil sharpshooters, a cowardly but treacherous creature which sends magical projectiles from afar. They flee whenever Ime sticks to them too much, but eventually they stop running away and attack. Kill more imps, kill more swarmers, cool. Twins, rude shooters. When I heard about these abominations from our scouts during the calamity, I could not believe it. It seems like they live in the mouth of the bigger axis, but this mouth is not part of anything else. It disappears in the ether with them when they die. So what is it? They appear in pairs, linked together. Whenever one is heard, it retracts in the mouth and regenerates. After a while, it pops back up as if nothing happened. Hitting the close to mouth during the time seems to break the regenerative magic, forcing it to start over. However, if the two are hurt at the same time, they finally die. They attack with deadly mortar shots, pay attention when facing them, especially when they are not alone. They almost never are. And Guardians, Demonic Keepers. They hold a giant shield split in two parts and attack by slamming them together, pushing their foes back. The combined parts of the shield form a face. I do not know what this face is or means or even why Rexus would bother doing such intricate work on a piece of equipment. Probably something linked to their beliefs. Perhaps they think this Raxus is holding the soul of something? Of an elder? Theories? Theories. Sadly, I can't just go and ask them. Cool. And something else. What's this? Shamshir and Tarj, blessed weapons of the Lasfanga. Ooh, cool. A set of weapons in the traditional fighting style of Mayura. The metal used to forge them was smelted during the benediction that led to Ime's birth as tradition orders it. Some say it is to bless the steel with Komera's powers. This light and powerful Shamshir is truly a work of art. The targe is not to be uh, scoffed at either, as nothing seems to be able to pierce through it. Even as a civilian, I can tell these sacred weapons stand apart from common ones. Long Distance Teleporters A technology conceived by Cobranus and Aka Jesus. Akauno a long time ago. Back in our days, it required a great amount of energy and took a long time to recharge. Thus, it used to be reserved for special occasions, such as dipl diplomatic missions and other important endeavors. Now, Ime is the only one here. She can use them to her heart's content. Are you sure this is safe, Cabronos? Not like your flying pyramid? Yes, yes, your, Maj your majesty. Please just stand there and think about the other one you visited before near the palace. It will take you there. No risk? Are you really certain? Extract from the Incendiary Admonition, Cabrunus, Genius or Madman, written in 194 after Mayus is sent by a concerned party. Raxus Crystals. Uh, I guess this is the same thing that uh, Kehar had on his left arm. Weird, brittle crystals seem to accompany the advance of the Raxus on Antella. What is surprising is that such crystals had not been seen during the first calamity, only much tougher, larger ones. The relationship between these crystals and the Raxus is intriguing. Their powerful magical properties suggest that they may be uh, the source of the Raxus' unnatural abilities or perhaps even their capacity com to communicate, communicate and act as a hive mind. The large unbreakable ones appear to hold less magic than the small brittle ones. Perhaps the reason the small ones are brittle is the flow of magic within? And that's it. Okay, reading session done. Cool, let's continue. Did we come from here? Yeah, this is how where we fought that guy with the shield. I know we just got uh, their actual names, but I'm just gonna call him the fat guy with the shield. Next fight. Another fat guy with the shield. Skills. You have learned a second spell, but you can only have one spell equipped at a time. Access your spells and choose which one to equip from the skills menu by pressing left. Equipping spells is free and can be done out of combat or during the overview of a fight. We're gonna stick with our actual skill. I must coordinate with my remnants. Mm -hmm. So, um, this mission was in the demo as well. Obviously, one character goes through the middle, um, stun locks this guy, has to watch out for these twin homies here, the fat uh, tonguey ones <laughs> to spit their stuff down here and has to dodge that. The other ones, the other characters go to the left, fight um, this twin, the other one goes to the right, fights that twin, and then they meet in the middle here and have to smash these uh, four pretty much at the same time and go down here and take care of that one. We have to be fast here with the um, 
uh, copies of us going left and right because uh, it takes a lot of time to do all of that stuff. I think there should be enough. That should be enough. Oh no. Uh, okay. Maybe that didn't work out. Okay, I fucked up. <laughs> Shit. Uh, okay. This happened in the demo as well. I don't know how to reset this now, because they are going now. I want to restart this arena, because I want to have control of what happens here. Oh, I got four! Yeah, yeah, I forgot about the fourth one. Ah, shit. Oops. Is that in time? It's not in time. And here we go with the next part. In the demo, I didn't try to beat these uh, uh, these times. Now we will. In order for this for these videos, for these episodes to not become overly long and you know kind of monotonous, um, I'm gonna give myself three tries that we're gonna follow, that you are gonna follow <laughs> as well. If I take longer, I'm gonna skip to the one that's uh, the actual successful session. So, uh, let's get to this crystal do it again i guess we got to make use of our fourth remnant here That other character gone. Yeah. All right. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's not enough. That wasn't enough. Holy shit, we only were one second faster. What the fuck? Okay. Uh... Maybe we don't have to do this smashing in the middle. This can just, just be done by the two... Um, Remnants that go through the middle here. And uh, the others just take care of the rest, like we did before now. So let's start with um, the ones going to the left and to the right. So um, we can just focus down this guy later on without these two shooting us at us all the time. Should be enough. Don't 
Is that it? It is. Cool. Nice. So that was the third try, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> Just in time. No editing necessary. <laughs> uh, let's go down here. Because this smells like... Orb Town. Or does it smell like... Next stuff. Oh, it smells like next stuff. Never mind. Wait, isn't that the same space? Yeah, that's the same spot. Here. Right? Well, I found, found an orb. <laughs> hey, here, this is where we were. Guess we destroy that thing. Okay, I feel really rushed now. Ooh, chest. Nice. Yeah, we gotta watch out for these as well. And I guess these other two, um, uh, here, the zero out of one thingies, that scroll and <laughs> whatever, is that tools? Is that, is that a ruler? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, blueprints, we'll call them. Um, I feel kind of rushed now because we've been speeding this fight process so much, uh, I feel rushed going through here, although I don't have to be. I saw an orb. Can we destroy anything here? No. Cool. And there's the last crystal. Or the last, I think it's the last to open that portal up there. Since we don't know what um, these other collectibles look like, I feel like I have to touch everything here. Alright, next challenge. Oh damn! Oh you know, I remember these. Bomb wings. Bomb wings try to explode on you when they are near you. When they die, they are thrown in a straight line and will explode on anything they touch, including other Rexes, dealing a lot of damage. So we can they throw these guys. Uh-huh. Maybe I can use that to my advantage. Just smash them dead and then uh, line them up with a perfect billiard shot and uh, smash them into their enemies or their homies and uh, kill them. I wonder. So the first one obviously has to smash that guy, but. Um, that guy will revive through this guy. So I wonder if it would be beneficial to try to pass this this enemy and uh, kill these three as well as the crystals. Then with the third character, kill that guy and smash him into the twin. I feel like that would be the best option. And then the second character can go up here and get to that flying fat fuck and um, smash him into these three. Mm, let's try that first. We're gonna take a second here. Wait a second. There you are. Now we can attack. Reset time. Because we waited a second now, this guy would now focus on us. Oh, I fucked up. Let's see if we can salvage that. Oh fuck, he's alive again. It's probably not fast enough, huh? No, <laughs> not even close. <laughs> Try to think on my feet and it didn't work. Codex updated bomb wing. No, 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 no. Uh, mm. There's no mark now here that it's new. I'm gonna read it now because we made the mistake of actually opening it. Um, is there new stuff for these guys? 
Uh, no, okay, bomb wings. Unstable flyers. A type of rax is filled with unstable energy. Literal bombs on wings. Very dangerous. We do not know how such a creature evolved, since its only defensive move would be to sacrifice itself. Another scholar theorized that the Raxes are created by a superior overmind for war. I did not have enough time to ask them before they left. Alright, go again. Uh, I think we've had the right idea here by passing this uh, blobby blob. And um, first of all, taking out this this three stack here. Although, the, hmm, I guess I shouldn't be. Yeah, I have to wait a little bit uh, when I go to the right here as well. Then let's just try it. So wait a second. Start running. Okay, this is has not worked out at all. <laughs> Let's see. Oh no, I missed. Okay, restart. Is that other guy alive again? Oh my god. Where's the explosion? Wait, we threw that guy over here. Where is it? What? He's <laughs> alive again. No. myself but time is <laughs> i exploded myself but we were six seconds uh, faster than we have to be good stuff 